Um, yeah, this this first photo, I've got my, my prom suit on from year 11 and it was kind of uh, a moment that I cherished signing a two-year scholarship at, at my hometown club. It was something that I was really proud of and, and to kind of get that two-year scholarship and then kick on was such a massive moment in my career. I don't feel like I was very developed at the time. I feel like I was quite still quite young um, in a 16-year-old body, body, but then kind of the work that you go through day in, day out um, was kind of life-changing really and it sets you up for that professional environment where you're going on training every day, having games Saturday, Tuesday in, in an environment that is quite tough really because you've got livelihoods on the line and, and free points which, which you need. He joined 13, 14 and I think he found out about his scholarship a little bit earlier than the rest. I think I still got told a little bit earlier but he was like quite, quite considerably young to find out and then um, it was kind of re a relief for me and him. I liked competing with him and he liked competing with me. I think that's something that we don't really talk about too much because we're real good pals but I think that relationship that we had I wanted to be better than him and I think he wanted to be better than me as well so it was it was quite a healthy relationship and obviously he's moved on now but we still speak every day and, and yeah to go through with him was was really good because he's as I said he's one of my best pals yeah my whole city professional debut against Leicester in the cup um, I think the boys were on a crazy run in the league where we'd won three or four games on the bounce and it was good for me that we was obviously winning games but I wanted to be a part of that as well so I felt like I had a, a little point to prove in this game and luckily enough I actually, I actually did okay in the game and then I think the next couple of weeks I, I started my first um, professional game in the league but I don't think there's a photo for it on here but the, the Rochdale game um, that was kind of the biggest step in my career in terms of uh, I had a chance to prove myself at League One and I knew we had a good team and I felt like if I could get a good run in the team that I could pr prove a point to the manager and and the staff that I, I could be playing week in week out which luckily en enough I was I was able to do until obviously I had to look back at this girl now and it was really unfortunate in what happened still really haven't forgiven McGuinness for this um, I think it might have been my dad that told me that the goal had been taken away from me and I was kind of like, what? Like, where's that come from? Like, he didn't say anything. I think Bet David Byrne said something in the press after about McGuinness taking the goal and I thought he was uh, pulling my leg a little bit, but then... And then I obviously found out that it was his goal and I was really disappointed. Went in on the Monday and he took it to the dubious goals panel and I was kind of like, Josh, you've got... You've had enough goals this season, please, like, spare me one. I think at this time he'd not scored many, to be fair. I reckon looking back on it, he wouldn't have took that goal, knowing that he'd end up on 20-odd goals or whatever he scored that season, but... Um, it's just one of them and, and I've had to move on from it, and, and I have, but yeah, McGuinness is an unbelievable guy and someone that I think every team needs in terms of changing room, the way he is as a professional. Um, he's one of the best characters that I've ever met. Like how he can pick a changing room up is is a credit to him really. It's kind of a bit like bittersweet, not bittersweet, but like the fact that the fans couldn't be there was like disappointing. It kind of felt a little bit empty after the game really. Like we'd won and we'd obviously got promoted and it was the proudest moment of my career still is to this day but like you would have just loved to have celebrated it with the fans I think it would have been so much better if it wasn't in Covid times but I'm not like putting a downer on it or anything like that but I think if the fans were there you see what like in terms of how many we get at the MKM now it's it's crazy and if we could have had that for this game and obviously the Wigan game when we get prom got promoted and was champion, sorry, then it would have been even better. But every game we went in, it was kind of, we was quite dominant in them games. I think a few games we kind of deserved to get beat, but in most games we were so dominant. I didn't really feel too much pressure going into the game. Obviously you have it in the back of the, your mind that you need to win um, to go up. So it was a massive game and then 1-1 it was. And then we got a penalty and I was nervous, yeah. But I kind of knew 
that he was going to score. Like he just had that aura about him that season where anything he touched was kind of going in. You look at the goal at Crew away that he scored off his right foot from such a massive goal. He just had that that kind of know-how about him that he knew how to score in them and then big moments. And luckily he sent the keeper the, the wrong way. Yeah, just get getting having a full season with with your friends and your teammates and then to kind of look at each other and say that we've done it in, like we all had a was going to get a league one winners medal and we had a chance to go play championship football and especially after going down in the championship obviously I was a fan kind of watching it my season at Cheltenham had been done and then to see them go down was quite disappointing um, but then we knew that we had a chance to to bounce right back with the squad that we had because we kept a lot of the plays and fortunately we did that and it was such a great season. Yeah, yeah me and Keno, Charlton and away I think that is um, with the actual trophy. Kind of a, a weird game that um, they obviously needed to win um, to try and get any sniff of the playoffs and I feel like first half we was in complete control and then second half I, I think I scored an own goal in this game uh, which was a little bit like, obviously, I didn't want to be downbeat about winning the the champ, uh, the League One, sorry, but I'd just scored a known goal and no one wants to score a known goal, so I kind of needed to think, oh, I've, we've won League One here, like, I need to put a smile back on my face, and I definitely did that on the night where we, we celebrated in London. Yeah, and then, I believe that's my championship debut against Preston. Um, kind of worked so hard in pre-season in terms of you knew you had to step up a level coming into the championship. Um, so yeah, I didn't really know what to expect of it. Yeah, it was kind of 1-0 down early doors, 20 minutes. I was like, oh no, like this is the championship now. Like what's going to happen after this? Are they going to come and batter us? But luckily we had a lot of experienced players in the, the changing room that got us through the game. We dug in. Um, in front of them fans as well, that was an unbelievable away day at Preston um, with so many of them, the fans that turned up and kind of got us back up after going 1-0 down and fortunately we won 1-4-1, won yeah. I look really young on this photo, this, I think Wigan in the cup um, where I was captain, straight into the Wigan game and we had a little blip kind of after the Preston game. Um, just one of them where I was going into it as captain thinking that I can kind of get, get the team going because the uh, morale was a bit down so I had a big job on my hands and I can't remember how old I was at the time, 19 or 20 and to captain my hometown club was oh, like, I was so proud to do it. Um, I remember Grant McCann telling me the day before in training and like I couldn't wait to get on the phone to my mum and dad and, and tell them that I was captain. But then kind of you put the armband on and I try not to change too much. I've been captain a couple of times and just try to go out there and do do my normal thing really and not change anything, just try and, just try and lead as I normally do. I look young there though, I've got a, cu a couple of big spots. The Blackburn game, um, the new owners, I think it was live on Sky, I did press before so I kind of Dan told me early that the new owners, it was getting announced, so I come into the change room and kind of, I was like telling everyone that it's been announced, like I felt quite important that I knew a little bit of information before everyone else. Um, so yeah, the, I remember walking out and I remember in the, the top left where the fans um, was, I could hear an absolute racket. I don't know if it was in the concourses before, but the atmosphere was, was on a different level that game and it was a great game live on Sky, we won 2-0. Looking back on it, like it's such a brilliant thing that these new, the new owners have come in and everyone's took to them because they've got the football club at heart, which which is all the fans and all we expect really. And yeah, it's it's a great place to be at the minute. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is probably the the craziest moment of last season, probably for Hull really, in, and like not just for me, but. I think like this was such a great game, like Tuesday night under the lights, good pitch. 2-0, I just remember Mats Matson going through down the left and I knew he was always going to have that shot first time and it was like perfect for him. And then I thought I'm just going to give myself the best chance to help Matty out here and fortunately I got some on it and then come back off Matty, 
hit me and then I've just thrown, so weird, like it happens so fast you sometimes can't really remember what was going on. And then I've just tried to throw myself straight back and get something on it and fortunately Sean is on his toes and he, he's cleared it. I don't think he gets enough credit for that because I think it's going in if, he, if he's not um, as sharp as he was. No, as I said, I didn't, I didn't have a clue what, what was going on really. I, I'm looking at it now and I'm in, I'm in the net, so I've got no idea. Um, but to keep it out was probably the best goal line clearance I've ever done in, in my career. And then, yeah, as you see, look how thingy, how close it was to going in. I feel like going into the changing room afterwards as well, the lads thought that the goal line technology wasn't working. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute, like, the technology there for a reason, it's 21st century, like, it has to be on, but then you look at, they have, they've had incidents with it before, and then to get that clarity that it actually didn't cross the line was like, wow, and at such a big point in the game, uh, with 2-0 up, if that had gone in, I think it had been a complete different game, they'd have come on to us, and yeah, we've won 2-0 and got an, a nice little clean sheet. The famous away kit at home, a bit controversial, that one, but we always used to seem to win games in it, so why not play it, playing it at home? And there was kind of in the change room after we knew that the pressure was on us, but we had the backing of the fans, the staff to just say go out and take, just play like an, another normal game. And fortunately, we did that, and we had a lot of good performers in that game that that won us the game really. And, and yeah, it was a relief that we knew we was going to be playing in a in the championship for another season. Um, last game of the season, Forest this one, yeah. Just showing our support for the fans really that had followed us home and away all season. Um, sometimes I don't think the, f the fans know how grateful the players are of the support that they give us, the, the kind of the 12th man, uh, if you'd like to say, but yeah. We conceded a pen, I think Hood's giveaway pen. Um, and Brennan Johnson scored, celebrated in the fans, they were going mental and then I think got it straight from kickoff. I've hit the ball out to Louis, he's crossed it and Keane scored. But Keane didn't score, Louis scored and I don't know how Keane got that goal because he did not touch it at all and I should have had an assist but I didn't get it. Um, yeah but Louis cut in on his left foot thinking no way she's going in, like it's on his left foot. He's, to be fair, he has got a bit of power in that left strike, but you thought the keeper's just going to smother this up and then it's kind of like a static. The, the fans were going mental. We knew that they had a lot of firepower, so we knew we had to be on our game. Um, they'd come kind of thinking we beat these 5-0, like we can do it again, because in fairness, they were, we quite comfortably got beat that day. Could have actually probably been more. Um, so to beat them 2-1, obviously we went 1-0 down, um, like the start of the championship season last season. Um, yeah, it was a bit disappointing, but then to get back in the game, we had a fair few chances and then we got a bit of luck with Mika's goal, <laughs> a big deflection. Um, yeah, it was brilliant really, and then kind of we want to kick on now. And I feel like team bonding is We've got an unbelievable dressing room, but I think nothing breeds positiveness in the change room more than winning games. I feel like if you're losing games, it's going to be a little bit down and sometimes it's hard to pick a changing room up. So to be winning games with a lot of new lads is kind of massive because everyone's in better spirits. We was thinking that we brought a lot of new faces in, like this could take a bit of time to gel and Sometimes the fans might have to be a little bit patient, but fortunately we started really well and I feel like we've gelled quite good as a group because we've brought in a lot of good good lads, good players. So, so yeah, let's try and kick on and, and pick up a lot more good results. So obviously congratulations on signing your, your new contract. How, how are you feeling? Yeah, static really. Um, really happy to, to put pen to paper, which has been in a stressful couple of months terms of trying to just sort this deal out um, to be honest I didn't know too much about it I was kind of concentrating on the football and letting things go on in the background and once I got the call to say that the contract's there to sign I was over the moon to sign another long-term deal at, at this football club is something that I've always wanted to do and to now be able to to get my head down and kick on and try and get get to new levels.
you've had a lot of support from the fans as well on, on social media since your contract was announced. As a local lad, like how much does it mean to you to, to have that support from the fans? Yeah, I'm really thankful for the support of the fans. Hopefully I can keep trying to pay them back, which I do every Saturday, Tuesday, whenever it may be. Um, as I was obviously, well, I still am a fan, I was one of them as well, so I can kind of relate to to, to them and to what's going on, how they feel about their football club, but to have that support from them is is exceptional really. I feel like I can go out there and really try and put on good performances and know that I've got the backing of the fans is, is great for me. Yeah, I feel like it's only going to help me as a player.